Welcome back again. I am Nikki the Great coming at you with another message. And this one right here is going to be a little different. It it touches me to my heart. If you if you've not already subscribed, go on ahead and press the subscribe button. Hit that little notification bell so that you can be made aware of any new um, videos that I post. All right. So let's go on ahead and get into it. <laughs> um, today's message is called "When the Mantle Catches Fire." All right. When the mantle catches fire, and I was thinking about this earlier when I was in my dining room and I don't have any notes. Usually I try to, um, usually I try to have some notes that I can go by because I, I have a tendency to go on long tangents. Okay. But this time I'm just going to just speak from the heart because when I speak from the heart, it just seems like all the passion comes out with it. And when I'm talking about when the mantle catches fire, that is such a profound thought is such a profound vision when the mantle catches fire. So you're probably thinking, hmm, what is a mantle? <laughs> and how is it catching fire? And why is it a good thing? Let me let me take you back to two important people in scripture in the Bible. The first one is going to be Moses and Moses had a mantle. OK, and so when I say mantle, I'm going to say he had like a purpose. He had an assignment. He had a destiny. He had a plan that God gave to him to do a certain task. He had a mantle, but he did not always walk in the in the power of his mantle. OK, Moses spent many, many, many years doing something totally different than from the purpose that God called him into. But just because he was walking in a whole different profession didn't mean that he couldn't that that didn't mean that he took off the mantle or had the ability to take off the mantle what it was was that the mantle was dormant okay oh this is about to get good okay here we go the mantle was dormant so how did the mantle catch fire I'm gonna give you the story in my own terms okay in my own wording but um, he 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 fled from Egypt. Okay, he was a prince in Egypt. He did a bad thing. He killed somebody, and so he fled into the wilderness. Okay, he got married. He had him a couple kids, and he this prince became a, a sheep herder. He had a very humble um, humble job that he did, and so one day he was herding his sheep. And while in the earth realm, Moses was herding his sheep, minding his business. But in the heaven realm, God said it was it was it was time. God said he's ready. OK, so this is where the mantle caught fire. The mantle caught fire when Moses was minding his business and um, all of it. While, while Moses was minding his business, he came up upon a burning bush. He came upon a burning bush. The bush was literally on fire. Now, I wasn't there, but I can tell that Moses did not know where this fire came from. It probably wasn't even hot enough. And I bet you there were other bushes around that were not on fire. But this bush, there was something different about this bush. There was this bush caught his attention like there's something going on in the bush. So when he got close to the bush, a voice spoke to him. And told him something. He told him to remove remove his shoes. Okay, told him to remove his shoes. Now Moses, now God had God had said a few things to Moses about um, the, the, the 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 children of Israel, and it's a kind of a lengthy story. But in that moment, Moses's mantle caught fire. His assignment, his purpose was activated. It caught fire. And so when the mantle caught fire, the purpose started. The vision started to become motion. It started to move. Things started to happen. Now, let me tell you about somebody else. This man, this one right here, I named my son after. We're going to talk about Elijah the prophet. He was a, a, a Tishbite. It was um, a group of people um, from those from that from that from that era. Okay, he was a Tishbite, and he was a prophet. And the prophets uh, in that day was a lot different from the prophets that we have today. Okay, so he he lived a life of seclusion. He lived a life of kind of just 
nomadic kind of lifestyle by himself that he lived and he um he lived in an era where there was a lot of worshiping of other gods there was a lot of sin happening all right and this story there's a lot of stories of elijah but this story in particular um, took place with elijah the prophet of god having kind of like a showdown with 400 other prophets for 400 plus other prophets and these prophets were prophets of another god that they call baal okay and i'm not going to give it that baal the respect but in this and within this group of people baal was worshipped by um, by these people and if you've ever heard of the story of jezebel this was kind of in jezebel's days too okay so uh, there was a showdown between 400 prophets of Baal and Elijah, the prophet of God. So, I mean, who's outnumbered? Who's got more power? What is going on? And in this, God wanted Elijah to show the people because there was there were spectators. It just wasn't just God. I mean, it just wasn't Elijah and the 400 plus prophets of Baal. This was a showdown. There was like the city came to see this 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 um this this i don't want to call it i'll call it like a, it was it was it was a lot of spectators there it was a huge event it was a big event okay so there were people around and god wanted to show these people who he was who not who he was who he is and what he is about because obviously they have forgotten all right and it also comes to mind that god needs bodies in the earth realm to 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 pour out his goodness, to show his strength, to show he needs he needs he needs people to say yes. He needs people to really believe. He needs people that are willing to forsake it all to love him, to pursue after him, and to do what he needs for them to do. Okay. So Elijah answered the call. Elijah is there. Picture this man by himself. And God told him to go up against this whole, all these people, including, including these 400 and some odd prophets of Baal. And he's by himself. And I already know they're talking trash about him. They probably calling him names. They probably poking fun. He's a one man show against this entire, um, this entire community of, of Baal worshipers. Okay. So of course these Baal worshipers, they're bigging up their God. They're bigging up their prophets. And Elijah went ahead and gave them opportunity. You know what I'm saying? We about to call fire down. So go and so he gave the 400 prophets, you guys going ahead, you guys going ahead and go first, okay? And have your altar catch fire and then it'll be my turn. Okay. So these 400 prophets, they're praying to Baal. They're asking him to send fire to burn up the altar that they had prepared. And um, they're waiting. And they're waiting. And they're waiting and they're crying and they're hollering and they're they're cutting themselves they're sacrificing parts of their body to show Baal that hey you know it's in front of everybody we got this man of god over here talking about you ain't about nothing we need you to do this and they waited and waited and waited i believe it was like all day long and what ended up happening is that the roles are kind of reversed Elijah, the prophet, said to them, he started to encourage them, well, you guys keep praying to Baal. He's probably relieving himself. He's probably using the bathroom. So go on ahead and shout louder. Cut yourselves deeper. You really need to get his attention because he's probably busy. So <laughs> Elijah was, was mocking these prophets and they probably turned the heat up and continued cutting themselves deeper, cutting each other, hollering, yelling, crying, throwing themselves to the ground. Who knows what those guys, what those guys were doing? But when they were finished, nothing happened. Okay, nothing nothing happened. Their altar did not catch fire. So uh, it was Elijah's turn. It was Elijah's turn. Okay. And this is where his mantle, this is where his mantle caught fire. Even though I believe that his mantle been then caught fire, but I'm going to use this as an example. This man of God built the altar of God. And he built the altar of God and he had so much confidence in his mantle. He had so much confidence in the assignment, confidence in the purpose against all these hundreds of people that were watching him. 
confidently, this man by himself, this man that lived in the wilderness. It just, it makes me, it makes me think of whatever Elijah had about him, we need within us. You see, Elijah did this thing that we refer to as a death walk. You see, he decreased for God to increase. He was a humble, humble, humble man. And in his humility, in his humility, in his perseverance, in his belief, in his, in his processing and thinking of God, he did everything, anything God had asked him to do. So he built up the altar and he had so much confidence. He told the, the people, get me some water. And this is a time during a drought, but there was water hidden somewhere. Elijah, I, put some water on my altar. <laughs> he had so much confidence in God and confidence that God was going to catch his altar fire. He's like, you know what? Drown the entire altar. Put the whole altar underwater. I'm going to show you how strong my God is and how alive he is and how he still is in the miracle, miracle working business. So show enough. They dug a ditch around the altar. The altar was covered with water. And Elijah prayed, God, catch my altar on fire. Catch, catch your altar. This is your altar. Catch it on fire so that they know that you are the God and not Baal. And show sure enough, fire came down. And I used to think it was like a brimstone. A brimstone is kind of like a, a rock that's on fire. I thought that the rock that was on fire came and just caught the whole altar on fire. It wasn't like that. It was fire came down like huge fire came down and burnt and burnt up the altar the altar it didn't even it didn't even burn it just kind of disappeared that's how hot it was and so in that moment after that uh, uh, this video is suited for kids so i'm not gonna go into detail about what happened after that but if you could if you would go in and i think i think the book of i think that the book i think it's in the book of kings first or second kings you have elijah in there he's got a couple really amazing stories um in there but the the mantle caught fire the purpose caught fire the the assignment caught fire and with that situation it was shown to to that community how strong god was how strong how strong god is and what he what he represented and that baal was not the one that controlled the water he was not the one that controlled creation he was not the one that gave them their life and their prosperity it was god and um with um with the mantle catching fire i want you to i want you to think about your own mantle i want you to think about your own purpose i want you to think about the assignments and even if are you even walking in purpose are you walking in assignments are you walking in what god has for you there was a time that i didn't and didn't know about purpose and i didn't know i was totally ignorant to that so if you are in that place that I once was, I want you to know that God has created you for a purpose. And in your purpose, there are going to be assignments in your purpose. And if you have not already um, made that made that step towards God and committing yourself to him and establishing a covenant, go on ahead and do that now i strongly believe that god has got something so powerful and so great that he wants you to do that's why you're watching this this video right now i pray that you walk in purpose that you discover the purpose that god has for you i pray that once you are there in it that that the mantle catches fire, that you catch fire, and so that you're able to reach and touch other people and show people around you how how powerful God is. And I constantly pray for this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit or a baptism of the latter rain. And you and I both know that this world is coming to an end. There's a lot of ugly, ugly things that are happening. There's a lot of ugly things that are going on. And I constantly pray like, Lord, if you can, he, there's a, there's another scripture. It says um, the 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 harvest is many, but the laborers are few. God needs people here on earth just to say yes. Just say yes. You don't even have to know, Lord. You don't have to know anything, Lord. I say yes. 
Say yes with me. Lord, I say yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to your purpose. Lead me in the direction that you have me to go. I want you to establish a covenant, have a covenant with him. Because when you have a covenant with Jesus, there's this mantle that is going to catch fire. I am Nikki the Great, and together we are growing, sharing, and thriving.